and welcome to Race to Your Career, the podcast series brought to you by the British Horse Racing Authority's Careers and Racing Team. My name's Noor and I'll be your host as we dive into the world of horse racing. Now, it takes a lot of people to make a race day happen, whether it's a Grand National or an afternoon's race at Newmarket. I'll be talking to Adam and Jazz all about the different programs you can get involved with in horse racing. So let's get into it. Like in an ideal world, money and objects, I'd just be at the races every day of the week, just sat down in the stands, enjoying myself, watching all the horses, seeing them in the parade ring. It's a rumba lawnmower. It's actually been nicknamed Fred. What would you say the worst parts of your role are? The weather can be such a challenge. <laughs> and they even gave him a bicycle, so really he could get to work every day. <laughs> I'm joined by Adam and Jazz, who both went through the British Horse Racing Development Program. Um, so I'm just going to get you both to introduce yourselves. Yeah, so I'm Adam. Um, I did the BHA Development Program in 2023, um, and I'm currently at the National Stud, um, completing the Stud Management and Sales Consignment course in Newmarket. And I'm Jazz, and I did also the 2023 program, but I have come from a very different background. So I really came from a football background, wasn't didn't have a clue about horse racing and, until this, and it's really changed everything. And definitely, it's been amazing. So, so Adam, I know that you also mentioned that you hadn't touched a horse before yeah. you started. So why did you take part in the British Horse Racing Development Program? Funny story, really. I think I've probably told Michelle this about a hundred times, but I um I went to Champions Day in 2022, uh, specifically to see Baid, who was going there. I think he was he was he was unbeaten all in all his runs, and I thought I've got to see this horse. And I was I was kind of fell in love with horse racing through the form book, so it was all like watching it on a day to day basis through university. And obviously, I'd always kind of watched the Grand National with family, and uh, I, t- I went to the champ to Champions Day in 2022, and. Uh, so I'm I'm a bit of a bubbly person. I just started talking to this random guy, and it's like just didn't really, didn't really know who he was, but we, we just ended up chatting. Turned out he's called Matt Mancini. He works for the BHA, and then um, and we were just speaking. He introduced the BHA development program to me, and I was like, because I was currently doing my dissertation in syndicate ownership, like the motivations, etc. And he introduced it to me, and it, it kind of like I kind of then thought, well, why don't I pursue a, a cross, you know, a career in this industry that like obviously really interests me? I mean. My original thoughts were always football, but I mean, when I fell in love with horse racing, it was like this industry has potential to grow. And I feel that, you know, the progression that it could offer me is something that really attracted me to the sport. And he, you know, he was a massive factor in that put in my application because I didn't even know this was a possibility. And when I spoke to him at Champions Day, it really broadened my horizons. And, you know, here I am. So, yeah, yeah. it's totally mad. <laughs> Great talking to people. You mentioned syndicate. Now, for viewers who might be watching this, can you explain what that is for us, please? Yeah, so a syndicate is probably a, like an, a form of ownership mm-hmm. in which you would get maybe a set of, it can be anywhere between like 10 and hundreds of people together and they all kind of put a share in, they have a share in the horse and it's a, a way of them kind of getting in at a, a lower cost than, than what would tend to be with a, with a normal ownership. So it's kind of like a horse timeshare, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that sort, of, that sort of thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, what about you, Jazz? Why did you take part in the British horse racing? Department? So coming from a real football background, again, like Adam, I thought I was going to work in football for the, the rest of my life. I have worked at a couple of clubs, and I really enjoyed that. And doing social media has always been a real passion of mine. Um, but I then went to a careers day talk and. The only reason I went to the careers and racing talk was because it wasn't football, because going to a football uni is very, it's full on. So I did that and I networked with Sean and Adam, who told me more about this like career and race, and I was just completely shocked by it. So then I started volunteering for them, doing some work with them, to go into different race courses and just looking at behind the scenes, which really opened my eyes because... I really did think that it was just racing, like they get on a horse and race and then that's it. And it really isn't. And the work that goes on behind the scenes that not everyone sees, I wanted to help showcase that. And then I was introduced to the development programme. So I thought I've got to apply and see what avenues that takes me down. And here I am now. So it's been so worth it. So Jess, what did you learn from the development programme? Um, in my time at the development programme, I learned just how many different avenues there are in racing and everything that gets put into it so whether that be from like a hands-on side or the vets or just marketing it and the groundsmen like 
you don't realize how much goes into and we had so many lectures and they all came in and like they really gave us a little taste of what it's like and that I feel like that really helped because I learned so much just on day to day of like everything they do and how they got into and stuff so I learned how many different avenues you can go down yeah I'd, I'd like to echo exactly what Jazz said I think it really you know opened my horizons as to what I could actually do in this industry I mean, you go in there and like, I, I mean, we were just touching our off camera, we were like, all my mates at home, they'll ask me, oh, so you want to be a jockey? No, 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 no. I don't want to be a jockey. Look at how many different facets there are. And I think that's what the BHA development program does so well. The amount of lectures that you have, you know, you're visiting studs, you know, we were on the race course at Leicester behind the scenes, stuff like that really, you know, kind of lets you know that this industry isn't just about that. It's much more. And there's so many things that go into it. I think that's part of the reason, I mean, I, I went in there thinking I wanted to gain some hands-on experience because it's something I'd never done. And I think that through the BHA development program, it opened my eyes as to what it actually entails and all the sales preparation that, that studs do and um, like the whole breeding season, which obviously we're in at the moment. It's, it, you know, it's a really busy time and I think it gives you appreciation for that uh, as the industry as a whole. And I think that really, like, you really get to see how hard everyone works in this industry, like, the early starts. Some, like, we went to uh, Sir Mark Prescott's yard mm. and we were up at 5.30 and we were all complaining about that. But, like, they do that every day. And it's mm. it's really, like, I am planning to see how much hard work goes into it. And that was quite inspirational for me personally and I'm sure everyone else on the course at the time because it just pushes you to want to pursue it even more. Mm. So apart from the 5.30 <laughs> starts, what other activities did you take part in? So we did a couple of behind-the-scenes days. We went to Leicester Race Course, and we were lucky enough to go to the July course as well. And, and get, we went to the yards and the the museums. We did so much. Like, it's crazy to think that, that we did that all in two weeks. Mm. Um, and, yeah, we did a lot of lectures. And, yeah, so, it, wow, it was... Just, the, I think the yard was, like, my... That was amazing for me, and that was probably one of my favourite visits. What about you, Adam? Yeah, I, I think I'm best seeing the, the, the National Stud visit, probably, now that I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that was like that was the point where me and Matt, who's um, also on the BHA development programme with us, me and him both looked at each other and were like, we should do this kind of thing. And we spoke to Jamie Jackson, also a BHA development programme alumni, and he said, he said, you know, get in touch with us. And we both obviously went off on our placements and got in touch with each other. And we're like, right, let's go and do this. And, and you know, that's where I am today. So I think that's probably got to be one of my highlights or else I'll get in trouble in there. <laughs> so off camera, you mentioned that you stayed in Newmarket for two weeks where they put you up in accommodation and, you know, kind of looked after you. Um, I'm assuming that must have been a little bit nervous because especially when you're with a big group of people that you don't really know. Um, like, how did you find the overall experience? Yeah, it it was really like starting uni again <laughs> because you are literally put in an accommodation for two weeks with sixteen strangers, and it but it was really amazing and like it was like starting uni again because you you get to see like everyone came from such different backgrounds and different areas. Like, I'm from real down south, and Adam's from up north, so it was really like <laughs> it's great and the friendships you make and just being in Newmarket like literally the home of horse racing for two weeks just it was really really good yeah I, I mean I loved it I, I'm one of those people I love meeting new people and people from different backgrounds so I really enjoyed it I'm like you know speaking to uh Raf who obviously sort of from up north even north than me and uh yeah we got up great and then obviously all of a sudden as we have a good laugh you know give him a bit of stick here and there but there we go and uh <laughs> Yeah, and I think, like, being in Newmarket, like you said, Jazz, fascinating place. I mean, I went for a run on the first morning, and they thought I was mad, but I tell you what, it's one of the best things I did. I went into town, ran into town, and I literally, it, was, it must have been, like, six in the morning, half six in the morning, and as I'm running, I spotted all the horses going up the gallops, and I literally had to stop myself, pause the timer, and take a video. I was like, this is amazing, this is where I want to be. Yeah. And uh, there we go, I've not left since, so there you go. It's, Proofs in the pudding, I suppose. Yeah, we got to witness it, and it's it's. You, I don't think you can see that anywhere else in no, the country. Um, it's not. it's definitely an amazing experience. Um, so, where did you go on your placement, and how did you find it? Yeah, so I went to Britbet, um, which is based near Angie Racecourse. I did eight weeks there, mm -hmm. and it was a fascinating experience. So good. I mean, obviously, kind of my 
my interest in horse racing came through the form books. It's really interesting to kind of know the the betting industry through through that perspective. And I mean, my highlight of that has got to be I spent you know all the Sky Bet Ebor Festival at York in the way in Rue, and it was Frankie de Tory's last meet at York. And, and my, one of my highlights of it was him high fiving me at the end of his last ride. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And you know, I was working on the Whirlpool, and the Whirlpool is like a new avenue into um, kind of the tote in in the UK. It's bringing um, international customers into the betting industry here in, in big meets. So, you know, you've got your Sky Bet Ebor Festival, you've got the Derby, um, you've got the Guineas, you know, these sort of group one meetings. And, you know, working on that was fascinating because we were always in touch with the Hong Kong Jockey Club um, and discussing it with them. Um, so it's, it taught me a lot there and I really enjoyed my time at Britbet and all the people I've met are still text today and we, we keep in touch. So it's nice to know, you know, you kind of learning different and, and learning different people in the industry and, and expanding your network as much as possible. Jazz, what did you do for your So my placement was at Sky Sports um, and I was also there for eight weeks and that I was really fortunate I got to go around every department with at the races. So I was in HR, marketing, commercial, production. So I really got a feel of how everyone works together and how like it comes from a broadcasting side of you as well. Um, it was really, really interesting. And again, like with all the different festivals and like race meetings I got to see all the presenters and luckily again shadow them and go to the race course with them and listen to them and how from the studio it comes out onto the race course and vice versa so it was really interesting I learned a lot and the people I met again like Adam said like I really expanded my network and now I can chat to them whenever if I need something um, or if I want to do something I know that I can go to them which is Mm -hmm a real nice thing to have in this industry because you always know who you can go to. Yeah, it's good to have a network as well to kind of ask people whenever you've got any issues. Um, So Adam, you're still here. (laughs) Uh, How has the development programme helped you with your career? Oh, well, I mean, like I touched on previously, like broadening my horizons massively. Um, I mean, obviously, from from my my first standpoint of coming into the industry, obviously I did my dissertation on syndicate ownership and and obviously I had the the idea that I wanted to get into the horse racing, but I didn't really know what avenue to go down. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out now, but I think that's the way the world works, isn't yeah. it? But I think it gave, it gave me a, a direction. Mm-hmm. And certainly, you know, obviously I had the help of Matt, who obviously was on our, our course, and he was kind of pushing me as well, like, you know, let's do this together. And um, I think through me having my time at BritBet made me realise, like, I lacked the knowledge of the horse. And when we're in a sport where the athletes of the sport and the stars of the sport are these horses and these beautiful animals, I need to understand them more in order to have a a great view of the sport. And so we both kind of discussed that with each other and it it pushed me to go in this direction. I think, you know, being at the British Racing School through my time in Newmarket, um, they obviously had horses on site there and we had, you know, times to go around. We seen some of the horses lunging and I was like, had my first experience of, of knowing what it's like to deal with a horse like on a day-to-day basis. And that kind of pushed me towards thinking, right, I need to do this part of, this, part of the industry because it's, it's vital for me going forward. Yeah, it gives you an understanding, yeah, a better definitely. understanding of everything. Oh, 100%. Uh, what about you, Jazz? Well, it really helped me because, like I said earlier, coming from a football background and volunteering at different clubs and working with different clubs, I got all these skills and horse racing just showed me that it's really transferable and I can bring these skills into horse racing and coming from not a horsey background, I can put my view in and see like how that would work in this industry. So that in uh, the development program really helped me for that because it showed me that I don't have to be horsey to work in this industry and I'm really growing to love it and I still like every day I'm learning something. So it's definitely helped me in my career because I know that there's diff- so many different avenues that I can go down and I just need to like have the courage to go I want to do this and I can yeah would you say you've got a highlight of the overall development program I think meeting everyone like networking was such a big thing for me because you get again you get to meet with these people and they're just so inspiring and the hard work they put in and there really is results that you can see the results of the hard work and it's just pushed me to put in the hard work myself so that was a definite highlight so you've both finished the programme now. I know that you're in careers and racing. Can you tell me a little bit more about what it is that you do now? Yeah, so I think coming from not being horsey and literally getting onto the programme through careers and racing, 
part of my job is to help other people do that. And so I go to a lot of career events, a lot of university or race day events and try and sell it to younger people, especially because we're really trying to get them more involved in the sport and show them that you can pursue a career. It's not just about being a jockey. And there's so many different, like I said earlier, like avenues you can go down. And if you want to volunteer, you can, or there's apprenticeships they can go on. And there's always steps, no matter like if you're 16 or you're 18, like that, and that's part of my job. And I work on a lot of the social media to push that across. So going to a lot of career events is of quite a big part. So if I was interested in joining um, the British horse racing industry, what would be the key things that you'd say to me to kind of get me to start applying? Get to a race day, I think, is one like because. If you come on an explore day with us, you can you can see what happens behind the scenes, and I think that just opens your eyes. It especially did for me because it speaks for itself. We don't really have to sell it too much. If you come to a race, I will always give you pointers and show you where you can go. But it really does open your eyes like when you're there, and it really speaks for itself. And I would yeah, just a lot of volunteer and network is a real big thing. Is what I would push. Mm. So it's sort of like how you started was going to the race days and kind of getting to experience it. Um, So you've finished the programme. You're at the National Stud now. What's the next steps for you? What's your role at the moment? Yeah, um, it's it's all still pretty confusing to me at the moment. I'm still trying to figure it out, I think. But, you know, obviously I've got, um, I had an interview with the Godolphin Flying Star, uh, which was an amazing opportunity you know, something that um, when I met Matt, I met Matt Mancini originally at Champions Day, he kind of said this is a long-term goal. And ever since me and my mum have kind of discussed it and said, you know, this is the dream. This is what I need to chase. And I mean, it's becoming more more chance of it being a reality now. But, you know, even to be in this position um, a few years ago, I didn't see myself here. Um, and that's, I mean, if you ever look at that, it's a dream for anyone in the industry. It's such an influential scholarship that's offered on a yearly basis to people who have a passion for the thoroughbred industry. And, you know, to have the chance to be able to put myself forward for it and have an interview for that um, is obviously an honour to, to be there, coming from a non-horsey background, as you, as you say. Like, you know, I've never touched a horse before here. <laughs> for me to be in this position now is, you know, it's, it's quite amazing to look back on. And, um, you know, it'd be, it'd be amazing if I was to get on there. If not... Um, I think I'm still going to kind of chase this this hands-on sort of experience and get myself more and more um, kind of, yeah, just dealing with the horses and, and making sure that I understand them as much as possible because I think that's, that's key for me going forward. Um, whether that be on the breeding side of a stud or in a racing yard, I'm not sure yet. I think I'd like to get the experience of a racing yard because I fell in love with horse racing for the spectacle for being on the races, so... I'd love to do that, but at the same time, you know, I also have a keen interest in bloodstock as well. So we'll see where it takes me. I think you've got to have a, an open mind in this industry because there is so much that you can do and you, you never know where you'll end up in the in, in the end game, I suppose. Yeah, keep your options open. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so what would you say your favourite aspect of a career in horse racing is? Oh, my favourite aspects. That's a great question. Well, I, I love the races. Yeah. I absolutely love the races. I love being at the races. I love watching the races, everything to do with it. So I've got to say, like, in an ideal world, money no object, I'd just be at the races every day of the week, just sat down in the stands, enjoying myself, watching all the horses, seeing them in the parade ring and everything like that. But I suppose, that, you know, in, in an industry perspective, I mean, I want to I want to change the industry. I want to make it more accessible for people. That would be through me making my own business in the industry and hopefully making an influential one, um, you know, just engaging people. And I feel like, specifically flat racing which is my passion i want to engage people into the sport through longevity i mean the only problem we have with the flat scene is you get a very good horse uh, i touched on baid earlier you may be having for two three years and then he kind of goes to become a stallion how can we bridge the gap and engage people on a full career and maybe a full stallion career um and yeah i think that's like a passion of mine in in the near future to hopefully kind of get something started to, to to start to engage people through that avenue so what advice would you give to someone who was looking to get started in the industry? Just go for it. Like, it might be really scary, but just go for it. Like, push yourself, because if you push yourself, rewards will come from it. Just go talk to them people, say hi, and it will go from there. So it sounds like as long as you've got the passion, the interest and the drive, 
pretty much get anywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well exactly. said. Exactly. <laughs> well, I think that's a really lovely place to mend I think. Yeah, 100%. Um, but thank you again for coming and telling us all about your experiences and hearing about your passions and, um, yeah, really giving us an eye into the industry. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. If we've sparked your interest and you'd like to know more, we have a whole host of resources for you to dive into. And this isn't the only episode of Race to Your Career. So if you haven't already, make sure to check out the rest. Thanks again and see you in the next one.